Rampage. Hey guys, this is Whisper, coming at you again with another IO commentary video. This one is to talk about patch 7.12 and how it affects IO. Uh, this is a really large change to IO. It's probably the biggest IO update that's come out since 7.07, .07, which is maybe the past six, six months. Um, a lot of people were messaging me, asking for my opinions on how I saw the updates, and I kind of wanted to make a video addressing it today. Um, so let's run over the individual points of the update, uh, how I see each of them in both positive and negative lights. I normally have a script written for these things. Today I'm just going off the, off the top of my head, so please forgive me if I'm a bit all over the place. But even I am trying to, to, to digest how this patch affects IO. Uh, the game that you're watching is one of the first games that I've played since 7.12. Uh, you can see here that I have infinite tether, I have uh, IO move speed matching the tether target, well, but we, we can talk more about that in a moment. Uh, let's start with the basic changes that have affected IO. These are pretty non-debatable, they're just pretty standard. Um, IO has had his base damage reduced by 4. Um, that sucks. I mean, th th this and the next one, I feel, are just changes to generally weaken the hero, uh, especially in the in, in the early game. Um, I don't know why they've done this. Uh, maybe they maybe they have felt that there's been a greater uptick in Soul Ring purchase on IO, and because Soul Ring has six strength built into it, you're kind of inherently getting a boost to your overall damage, so weakening damage beforehand might be a good counter. That's all I can really see for why this has been done. Um, generally not a nice thing, but, you know, four, four loss damage in the early game means that IO is slightly less effective at getting denies and last hits. He's slightly less effective at harassing your opponents, which was sort of your main function before. Um, otherwise, it's not the end of the world. By the time you're in the mid and end game, four damage doesn't mean anything. And, uh, like I said, it's not the most convenient thing in the world, but it's certainly not, certainly not the end of the world either. Uh, the next update, which is pretty standard, uh, relocate cooldown has been nerfed again by 10 seconds at each level. So instead of relocate cooldown being 120, 180 seconds, it's now 130, 110, and 90 seconds. Um, which kind of sucks. They've already increased relocate by 20 seconds from where it was before 7.07, .07, now it's 30 seconds. Relocate in the end game is a pretty strong skill, so I can kind of understand their logic here. They're sort of they're trying to taper off even more um, IO and the attack uh, t uh, tether talent at level 20, doing crazy rat pushes with it, with IO. I think they're, they're they're trying to taper that down by increasing that cooldown. Still sucks, but like I said, 10 seconds is not the end of the world. Um, the next changes are a little bit more controversial, and there's going to be a little bit more to discuss in them. I think the one that everyone is really hyped about is Tether no longer has a duration. Tether is infinite. As long as you do not move beyond the distance radius that Tether has, I believe it's 1800 units, I could, I could be wrong, um, as long as you don't move beyond that radius, your Tether will stay on your Tether target forever. I don't like this. Um, I think it it has convenience because people who don't play a lot of IO go, oh, that's great. I don't have to worry about recasting my tether. I can make sure I'm I'm getting more heals uh, per tether cast than I would normally because it lasts for lasts for longer. Although that's not true because of the next updates, but we can get onto that soon. I think people are really excited about tether being infinite and I don't understand that whatsoever. Tether was the perfect spell. It lasted for 12 seconds, and the cooldown was 12 seconds. How do I know when to recast Tether? It stops functioning, and the moment that it stops functioning is the moment I can recast it. There was a very simple, synergistic, physical way of seeing that you needed to recast that spell. On top of that, by the very nature of casting Tether every 12 seconds, you are spending 40 mana, that's the mana cost of Tether, to cast that Tether. 
By the very nature of casting Tether onto somebody else, you are lowering your MP below 100%, and because it's less than 100%, whatever you're casually regening, they will regen as well. Now that you have an infinite Tether, two bad things are happening. First off, you have no way of identifying when the 12 second cooldown of Tether ends. There is no indicator in your HUD, there is no visual way for you to know that 12 seconds have passed on your tether. And that's really bad. If you want to s drop tether targets, you know, disconnect from Juggernaut and reconnect to a Marana, you have no idea, other than your own quiet counting in your head, if the 12 second tether has finished. And that's a big problem. If you disconnect from a Juggernaut in a fight, in order to connect to a different hero, but you've mistimed it, and there's three seconds left on your tether cooldown, Juggernaut can die because you're not tethered to him, and Marana can die because you're unable to tether to her. And in that reality, you've screwed yourself in both, si in both uh, situations. That seems like a really big flaw in the design of how they've created this update. Um, I hope in the future they'll be able to fix it. Normally, back when Tether was 12 and 12, that was a very clear setup. You know, when Tether stopped working, you could recast Tether. When Tether was te when Tether was 14 and 12, you know, you could kind of bullshit it a little bit. You could look at the cooldown, uh, you know, where, where on screen now the spirits and the tango um, uh, abilities are uh, above my skills and my health bar. And you could look and see, okay, Tether is just about off of cooldown. I presume that this is about a two second difference, two seconds between 14 and 12, it should be off of, off of cooldown. Now you have no way of knowing. The second problem is that if you leave Tether running for long enough, you will hit maximum mana because your mana will slowly regen to full. If your mana regens to full, you're not giving mana through your Tether. Uh, that was the one thing that you never really had to worry about. You might have to lower your HP through overcharge or soul ring or taking damage so that you would have less than 100% HP, which means that when you regen HP, your tether target would, would regen HP. But you never had this problem with mana because mana, by definition, is spent to cast the tether, so you're always at 100, less than 100% mana when you have your, your, your tether. That changes now too. So what I find myself doing in this game, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, you've seen it a little bit before, and you'll see it later, even though Tether is infinite, I'm breaking my Tether and re-Tethering anyway, because people need to be gaining mana passively, and if I have 100% mana, I'm not helping them. So it's actually in their benefit and my benefit to recast Tether anyway, so that they can gain MP which kind of defies the whole point of having it be infinite in the first place. But, you know, to each their own, whatever floats uh, your boat. I can... Uh, I don't really understand why this is this is being done. I th I, I'm trying to put myself in the position of the mindset of the developers of Dota and what they see as being the benefit from making these changes. And I, I can't... I don't... I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to inherently make IO more reliant on other players. The functionality and abilities of IO are becoming more and more based on the abilities and functions of your core players. Uh, but I... I don't know if they made Tether this way and they thought they'd be helping people, or if they were trying to make it more difficult in a way, more reliant on someone else. I don't personally understand. Uh, the next change is one that I can kind of understand. This one makes a little bit more sense to me, and this is Tether regen sharing has been rescaled from a constant 1.5 times to 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5 as you level up Tether. I can kind while I hate this, <laughs> obviously it's it, it's a nerf, right? You're taking the amount of regen that IO can regen at every level and lowering it until you level up Tether. So the amount of healing I would give through a Tango, the amount of regen I would give passively or through a Salve, that's all been nerfed until I increase my increase my Tether. 
The reason I can understand why they did this is because 7.07 .07 introduced some really complex changes to the way that strength and mana regen function, and Io is the only hero in the game who can take advantage of that regen and apply it to other people through, through Tether. Um, I'm going to try and intercut some clips here. I hope it's not too uh, jarring from the gameplay. But before 7.07, .07, Io had 0 0.8 HP regen per second at level 1, and now he has so, like 1.9 or 1.7, uh, uh, more than a 100%, more than a 200% increase in total regen at low levels after 7.07. .07. And I have always been commenting about how, you know, you don't even need to start the game with the mango in your inventory anymore because the passive regen from a low-level IO has gone very, very high. I think they recognized that, and they tried to turn back the amount of healing that you give out at a low level because the amount of healing that you gain at all levels has been boosted since 7.07. .07. So I don't like this. I, I don't like this change. It does weaken the hero at lower levels, but I uh, I understand it. It it makes sense that when all healing and all regen has gone up, and you have one hero who can kind of uh, take advantage of that big bonus, that you want to try and curb that until you know you want it to be at max strength, which would be later in the game. Also, tether has always been a spell that has always been leveled last. It's never been that important. Uh, level 1 Tether and level 4 te Tether have never been that different. So they're trying to add to the weight of how important that skill is. Uh, you know, so it's there's a real question now, I would argue, uh, in the mid-game. Do you, after finishing leveling your spirits, you, 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 you need spirits, spirits is your main damage spell. After you're done leveling spirits, do you want to level overcharge to increase the amount of damage reduction and attack speed you gain? Or do you want to level your tether in order to increase the amount of healing and regen that you give to the rest of your team? Uh, and there's a real conversation to be had about whether the difference between 1.2 and 1.5 times regen is better than the difference between 5% and 20% damage block. Uh, I need to, you know, sort of, sort of run some mathematics on that, but it's an interesting question that is being raised at this point. So, I don't necessarily like the way that they've changed the scaling of the regen, but I can understand why they did it. They have also changed the scaling of the move speed buff. Uh, don't you remember when the move speed buff from Io was just 11%, 12%, 13 14 Those days are far behind us. It's went from 10, 12, 14, 16, now down to 7, 10, 13, 16. Really try to increase the weight of those points in Tether. Um, and the reason I, I would imagine this goes hand in hand with what I would argue is my personal biggest upset in 7.12 updates to Io, which is that Io's move speed is now matched by the move speed of your Tether target. And when I heard this, I was fucking livid. Because essentially, this breaks the entire concept of the build that I've, or at least I thought, this broke the entire concept of the build that I've been developing and focusing on for the past four months. Um, the Soul Ring build that I tend to play by has a lot of end game move speed items that are designed to allow Io to take advantage of a high speed, a high movement speed, which is something that not a lot of support players try and build around. Not to mention that Io had a 16% speed, <laughs> speed boost via Tether. Uh, there was a lot of different p potential there. At first I was really upset when I heard this, because this is a te potentially negative thing. If Io is moving very quickly, if he has 450 move speed, and he tethers to someone who has 400 move speed, Io is getting nerfed. Um, Io's move speed is way lower in that moment despite having move speed items, and that sucks. Uh, what's the point in having spent all this money on trying to develop a fast hero only to tether to, to somebody to try and run away with them, give them a speed boost to escape, make sure to tether to them to heal them, 
only to have you die in the process because you've become slower by the very nature of, try of uh, trying to save them. And that upset me, but uh, part of the reason I'm making this video is to try and describe to you guys that it's actually not nearly as big of a deal as I thought that it was. What it actually does is it gives you a really nice boost to your early game. Uh, the cores that you're going to be supporting as a support IO, every core is going to buy boots. Every single one. It's how the game works. You, They want to be able to escape fights. They want to be able to make sure they can survive ganks. So every single core hero that you are playing with as a support IO in the early game is going to have boots. And by definition, you're going to have boots through Tether. It essentially means this update to IO affects Io in the early game by making him faster and affects him in the end game by making him slower but even that is a stretch because the concept of not everybody plays my build there are many Io players out there who only get arcane boots and no other speed boost items and they love this build they love this update because this allows uh, what is normally a pretty slow hero to scale with the rest of his teammate not to mention as oh, uh, <laughs> I was about to say not to mention as I've mentioned be, uh, before that agility heroes gain speed based on the amount of ag agility they have since 7.07 .07. so there are heroes like juggernaut who will scale in uh, speed just by having good items in their inventory and you by definition will scale with them so as a result I feel like um, <clears throat> this move speed change I don't like it it's 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 not what I would optimally choose in order if uh, you you know sort of said whisper how should the next IO patch be designed that is definitely not something I, I would have put on the docket but um, as compared to being totally screwed like I thought I was prior it has a really nice effect in the early game and very little if any effect in the end game which is almost exactly how you want anything negative you want all the good things and none of the bad things um, and <coughs> I feel that with this build, you get a really nice boost to your speed in the early game. You can harass a bit more effectively. You can, because the fact that Tether is consistent now, you can maintain that high level of speed for as long as you stay close to your core. And as a result, you're able to harass better with your spirits, harass better with your melee attacks. Um, and it's generally a help. By the time that you have enough gold in your inventory that you're getting more than just boots for yourself, you know, if you're getting a Yule Scepter of Divinity or a Sanjin Yasha or a Spirit Vessel, anything else that gives you personally move speed, um, I think by that point, the fact that your tether locks your speed doesn't really matter. Other people have move speed that they've been developing you don't have to remain tethered to people all the time at this point, you know. Um, I think by the time you're in the end end game, by the time that you actually are playing the build that I would normally play, it doesn't affect you nearly as badly as I thought that it would, and that's a good thing. Um, being able to not be killed by your teammates because you have to tether to them and they are slow. Um, it is... I, I will say that what it does make you do which you've never had to do before as an IO, is you have to think critically about your tether targets and whether it's worth tethering to them in that scenario because you might die due to their slow move speed. And that's something that we've never had to chat about as an IO player. You've never had to quietly think like, is it worth tethering to this bounty hunter because I might actually die because Bounty Hunter o only moves at 300 and whatever speed, and now that I've tethered to him, am I going to die as well, being unable to escape? And that is really the biggest concern I've been finding since playing in, in the, the new patch, is this new level of thinking about, it's, it's not just that someone needs help, you need to tether them immediately, let's go. You have to take a half a second and think, more so than just, is this tether going to pull me into a bad position and kill me? 
like you would normally think, you have to take it one step further and say, is this tether going to pull me into a bad position that's going to kill me, or is it going to pull me into a position that I will not be fast enough to escape from because the person who I'm tethering to is slow? And l like I said, that's something that's never come up before uh, as an IO player. I've never felt that concern, I've never thought about that. Uh, so it's definitely a concept that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. But as I'm finding, and I hope as you guys are seeing, the rest of my build still makes sense here. Uh, solar, uh, solar crest, uh, soul ring, while only giving 120% of its MP to somebody rather than 150% percent is still enough to keep people full of mana in the early game. Tranquil Boots is giving less HP per second than normal, obviously, because of the way that Tether's been changed. But because it's a semi-infinite way of doing things, you don't have to pick up bottle charges, you don't have to refill your Tranquil Boots, it's still an effective way of healing people, even if what you're healing is less than normal. So... Ultimately, I'm still trying to adapt the way that my build works into this new patch. I've seen a lot of IO players who play different positions and play differently than me love this. I think I'm one of the only IO players who designed a build around moving fast, and this patch, while I thought it would interfere heavily with that, really only interferes minorly with that, which is very, very nice. But for every other I hope player out there, and I can think of mainly two types, I hope this makes sense to my audience. One is a standard bottle build mechanism uh, support IO that if you went into IO and you went to the number one rated guide, that would be what they would tell you to tell you to do. That is that type of IO play is enjoying this update because they're normally quite slow and they gain the benefit from maintaining their tether and being able to gain that speed boost. The other type of IO player is a carry IO and I know some very high level IO players that only play IO middle carry. They go Satanic, they go uh, Armwood of, of, of Mordigian and Daedalus and they don't go Boots. It's all about trying to maximize your melee damage. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you go Blink Dagger, uh, maybe you go something else, uh, Sanjin Yasha for speed, but you don't often go Power Treads or Phase Boots. So those players also love this concept of having your speed tied to your tether target because they don't have to invest in boots anymore. They can uh, know that in the end game they're going to be moving at 400 speed because whoever they're tethered to is moving at four at 400 speed. Uh, so they love this this as well. I think I am probably the toughest critic of this patch update because it was going to have the most effect potentially on my build. The most negative effect, I could argue. Um, but ultimately, it's not so bad. I think they're trying to ultimately, taking all the changes t uh, together, I think that they're trying to rescale the hero in two main ways. One is to understand that they think they're realizing that this hero at, at high levels is becoming quite quite popular. I think the win difference between ancient bracket and divine bracket is like several per several per per percentage points. And I have a feeling that they tried to make IO very accessible in 7.07, .07, and now they're dialing it back slightly. They realize that they turned it up to a 10, and maybe now they're trying to come back to an 8.5. And I think that's what these updates are. Uh, taking the damage down a little bit to weaken the hero, taking the relocate down a little bit to just slow, slow him down, and then a little bit of changes about making Tether a really important spell which, again, I'm not super excited about. I think there are some inherent problems in the design and the way that it's been implemented, but I think that that's stuff that a, a very simple patch update could fix. You know, some other way of being able to read Tether's cooldown, uh, some other way of, you know, I, I think that, 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 that these things are fixable. And in terms of the, of the regen and the speed, I can understand why they've why they've changed them alongside the fun the new functionalities of tether. I think it makes sense, and 
as I mentioned before, alongside the, the changes to regen at 7.07. 7 um, so all in all, there's definitely some things that I want to look at in the future for IO. I've seen a lot of players talk about the concept of Drums of Endurance now, with the idea being that if your move speed is tied to the move speed of somebody else, you can build items to increase their move speed. Uh, so being able to get a Drums of Endurance and use it on your party, the guy that you're tethered to, he gets a boost, so you get a boost, and obviously tether boost on top of that, everyone is moving faster. Um, so that's generally a good thing. Um, one thing to note, this also works with, with people who have phase boots. So if I'm playing with a Juggernaut, and Juggernaut has phase boots, and he activates his phase boots, I get a burst of speed for the same period of time that he does. Something I didn't notice until I played alongside one. Uh, but it's an interesting change to IO. I don't necessarily like it, but I don't think any humans really like change. It's something that they're very, very comfortable with. But it's interesting. And it opens up some options in the future. Like I said, drums are being played more often. I think this really opens me up to wanting to pursue other types of IO gameplay. I think that Bottle is becoming... I wouldn't say it's a stronger build by definition, but I would say there's definitely some things that are interesting me about Bottle build now as compared to Soul Ring Tranquil Boots build. Um, and ultimately I think there's some really interesting options out there, so um, I plan to make another update to this topic once I've played some more games, once I've had more insight from other people. Um, I just know there's been a lot of comments on my channel asking for information about 7.12, what do I think of it, how has it affected my gameplay, and um, I wanted to keep you guys up to date with what my what, what my thoughts are now, and I'm sure in another month and a half my thoughts are, are going to change. Once I've seen a lot of other IOs and how they're adapting to this, uh, once I, I look at some do some Dota buff stats, I think it'll be very interesting to see how IO players as a whole adapt to this change. And people people are loving Tether is Infinite. They're loving it. It's there's been a huge spike in IO picks in the past couple days, ever since 7.12 drops. Huge increase. Um, and it's everything about IO has been nerfed except for Tether has an infinite duration, and people are loving it. They think it's amazing. So uh, my perspective is obviously a pretty weird and biased one since I've spent so much time on IO. Uh, maybe it makes more sense to, to the average person to just say, hey, um, I want to heal people with Tether, and this, this makes it easier. I don't want to have to recast it. I don't want to have to worry about mana regen. That's that's too complex for me. I just want to focus on healing dudes with the, my bottle and my mechanism. So I think there's, there's a lot of potential out there. There's, there's a lot of paths and potential ways to manipulate speed in the future using uh, Tether as a, as a lock. Um, what really throws me off is that they, just like two updates ago, they changed Tether to being 14 seconds long instead of 12 seconds, and then two updates after that, they're like, nah, it'll be forever, don't worry about it. Like, what schizophrenic ice frog rules are they making back there to just, um, and then, you know, spirits, now you get 12 spirits, you just get 12. It's not 5, it's 12, because, um, and then we want to, and then the next update, it's, it's only 2, you only get 2 spirits, don't worry about it. Um... I, I, it feels a bit schizophrenic, to be honest. Feels like they're jumping around the map trying to figure out what to do. Um, but hey, uh, for everything else, I kind of understand their 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 logic. So um, I hope the development process is a bit smoother in the future. And please, for the love of God, don't make any more big changes to IO because I don't think my poor little heart can handle it. Um, so that's all for now, guys. There's only a few more minutes of the game left. I'm gonna let them run out. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit of relief from me to you that even though these changes are kind of scary and all over the place and might seem more negative than positive, there seems to be some logic, for the most part, put into some if not all of them. Um, so as a, as, a, as a result, it's not nearly as traumatic or dramatic as, as it could be. 
Um, that's all for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been in insightful and potentially uh, educational as well as interesting. Uh, hope to see you. Hope to see you guys soon. Check me out on Twitch. Uh, check out other videos on my channel. I have a Patreon. Um, go watch some good IO gameplay. All right, guys. See ya. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiance Ancient is under attack.